What's going on, guys? This is not your ordinary guy. No, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. You know, pro players aren't always the most consistent, but if there's one elite player that has always shown up, like on the leaderboards, it's your boy Mongo. Just recently, he obliterated his competition in the Paradox Cash Cup to end up in first place. And honestly, his evolution as a solo player in these last few months has been outstanding. So how did he do it? Sadly, the replays for that tourney aren't available for some reason, so we couldn't analyze them. Why? I have no idea. But we did set out to do a mongrel analysis, and you know, we weren't gonna let that just stop us. So instead, we just peeped at a few of his arena and DreamHack games and you know, just really extracted all the juicy tips that we found that can be really helpful in this video, which we're gonna teach you how to be a box fighter, you know, much better, rotate effectively, and dominate games just like mongrel. But before we start, all right, if you guys want similar analysis, done to your own gameplays use pro guys to upload your own replay and we're gonna get our best coaches you know on this case man whether it's trios or solos or console or pc man save time get better quickly at pro guys check us out the link is in the description all right guys bunch of crunch army where you at here we go say it with me it's time to sit back relax and grab some of my favorite candy what is that y'all it's that bunch of crunch Woo! and let's get this going so I want to start with a few things we noticed when looking at Mongo WK. All right, first being his liberal usage of mobility. This was before they nerfed the drop spot, but Mongo picked up crash pads at any chance he got and he used them almost exclusively for fights, not only to exploit into boxes, but also as a way to quickly chase enemies or take height, which might seem like a waste, but think about it this way. All right, the more time it takes for you to reach your enemy after you tag them, the more opportunities they have to pop shields. Using one crash pad to close the gap could be the difference in them like not popping that big pot aka you're gonna be up 50 damage in the fight guys sounds worth it to me and the same with bouncers like although we're not mongrel all right so i get it we're probably not gonna have 24 bouncers to spare like he does but either way like if you're trying to w key never hold into mobility for rotations it's just much better to just use your utility in fights than it is to die with them untouched even if it's just to sneak in an extra shot like i know many of us have this mentality where we need to hold into mobility for the end game right that's not bad or anything like that but if you're in arena and especially if you're W King, using mobility aggressively can catch opponents off guard and will often be the difference that allows you to get the kill. So next really isn't like a jaw dropping, like game breaking tip, but something that we saw Mongo do was drop his fire traps often. Now, okay, you probably noticed the fire trap isn't the most useful item. I get it. <laughs> it barely works and it really does like no damage. So dropping them can actually be helpful since you won't have to cycle through your traps to place a bouncer. And in certain panicky situations, all right, like having one fewer thing to manage can really help you guys a ton it's what people did back in the day with the chiller poison traps and mountain turret remember those so if you haven't used the fire trap successfully so far this season then honestly dropping them isn't really a bad idea since it might prevent you from accidentally placing the wrong trap one day and just like every pro that W keys nowadays, Mongo uses peace control, man. Like peace control is a big topic that not many of us really understand yet. So we figured we might as well go over a few of the more practical peace control techniques that Mongo used for any of you guys that are still having trouble, all right? All right, so one we saw often was the wall edit into comb block. When there was an enemy behind Mongo's wall, okay, he performed a top right corner edit and followed up with a cone over top them to block off their vertical escape route. Another classic is the cone slide. All right, you take a wall, edit it, and slide in a cone to prevent them from ramping. This one's best done from the left corner of their box. So, you know, if you miss or they edit on you, you could just place a wall for cover. All right, so there's also the wall block, which is really just, you know, what the name says, like where you block off any exit you think your opponent will take with the wall. Then there's the ramp floor double edit, which can be done anytime you see an opportunity to place a ramp and floor over your enemy, all right? And who can forget the mongrel classic, of course. Although cone slides are recommended due to being faster, Mongo Classic can be better in instances where you need the right hand peek. So just like with any building techniques, you can practice these in creative. So I highly recommend running some drills so you can just improve on your peace control, all right? All right, guys, so moving on to Mongo's sweaty dream hack games like right now. <laughs> One of the first things we noticed was how slowly he took fights compared to when he played Arena. Finding good openings against higher level players can be a challenge, so Mongo would often play defensively in fights, waiting patiently for his opponent to make a fatal mistake, such as getting caught with their pickaxe out. Like Mongo played it slow in two ways, all right, like utilizing safe peaks like the right hand corner edit and always shielding up when needed. 
And by playing this way, he minimized the HP he lost, which allowed him to lead the fight with more spare health and shields than you know he would have otherwise. This is critical in this meta. Some of Mongo's fights lasted nearly three minutes, which is quite a long time. Like, <laughs> but he won them. And then he went on to do really, really well, you know, in the rest of the game. So it's definitely worth it. And while you won't always be able to take your sweet time, especially when you don't have the zone advantage, playing it slowly and methodically when you can is honestly the better choice. All right, so coming up are more amazing tournament tips hope you guys are ready but before we get into them if you're looking for someone to coach you live during an event or even arena pro guides has some of the best for hire guys like they can help you get more points so check them out today in the description below all right, so when going through Mongo's DreamHack games, we noticed a shift in play style as the tournament progressed. All right, starting off, he played it slowly, taking advantage of the point system that favors placements by landing safe instead of hot dropping, disengaging fights that weren't favorable, all right, and only taking battles he had a clear advantage in. But when Mongo was falling behind on points, that's when he began to play a little bit more aggressively. He let in that sweaty for a hot drop and didn't back down from fights, only disengaging to find better positions for the kill. He also attacked during the mid game and even a bit toward the end of the match which most of us wouldn't do okay let's be real so in summary once mongrel felt like he was behind on his points goal he began playing more aggressively to make up for it with kills and maybe this is like really obvious to some of you guys but i'm not sure hopefully this tip really helps you play the format and really get better placements all right guys moving on i want to mention how mongrel rotates and where he positions in the circle for zones two and three, all right, Mongo seems to prefer setting up in the edge of the circle, which is a strategy we're seeing more and more pros actually do. So while setting up in the center does give you the highest probability of being favored next zone, the problem is that everybody goes to the center nowadays. So by playing edge, all right, you can actually avoid player congestion, which can lead to a longer survivability, right? Of course, for zone four and beyond, playing edge is recommended to give you guys a greater chance of being favored. Nothing in terms of strategy changes there, but for zones two and three, all right, don't think that you have to play the center, man. And as much as you hear us and other channels say to it's still a great strategy for sure but since so many people do it those spots are cluttered man so you might be better off just playing the edge all right lastly let's talk about how to take height in the end game starting with item usage you guys ready of course mobility like bouncers shock waves and crash pads are instrumental sure you can always just crank up too but in a stacked game especially a stacked solo game using items for height is the way to go so, how does Mongrel use these items? Well, timing is so crucial. He typically waits until zone seven before even going for a high take. First thing that he does is make sure that he can gain as much distance from the storm as possible. So, he'll shock wave or crash pad to gain distance and then avoid using mats in the seventh zone. Once he's inside or close to the safe zone, that's when he'll look up and he'll take height. In solos, you typically wanna go for height during zone seven or eight, all right? In trios and other team modes, you can go for it as early as zone five. But if you try that in solos, you're gonna run out of mats guys before the game ends so to make it easy remember these steps all right wait for zone seven use mobility to gain distance on the storm then look up and if you see an opportunity use whatever items you've got to go for the height take once up there don't go too high up remember to waterfall down and just connect to lower layers when you need to and pay attention to your mat so you know when to drop and look for a refresh all right guys so we're gonna do a recap here we go first practice those peace control techniques in creative so you can just get better right and just get a, a much comfortable feel for them then head into arena for some w king aggressively playing you know utilizing bouncers crash pass and shock waves for any cash cups, scrams, or tourneys, generally be passive, right? And focus on placements, but don't forget to shift your play style to something more aggressive if you think you're falling behind your point target. It might just give you a nice boost in the leaderboard. But if you lose those fights, man, remember, you've at least learned something. Okay, so and for the zone positioning and height taking, I want you to jot down the conditions we went over, all right? How Mongo positioned from zones two to four, and how he took height. So that way, when you get into a stack game, you can always refer to your notes and never forget what to do. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. If you guys enjoyed the video, hey, slap a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with the bell button turned on. And that way, you're going to be a part of the first to get many new tricks and videos and tips that we got coming out, man. So amazing. I'm so excited. And uh, once again, keep eating that bunch of crunch and let's get this going.